Good day and greetings from the Great White North. My name is Prickly Pooh and welcome to day 288 of a year of change and the beginning of week 42 for us. Um, over the past couple of weeks, we've been sort of um, looking a little closer at exercise and getting back into that groove. Um, we had been doing things throughout um, the past few months, just sort of starting off and, and gradually building up. But I really wanted to sort of focus in on, on the exercise. Um, this, of course, being... <laughs> Try that again. This is, of course, being the beginning of a new week. I don't know what happened there. Um, do your weigh-in as per usual. I did my weigh-in today, and it's not good. Um, I just from the from New Year's Eve. There is an aftermath to that, so we won't talk about that. I gained, um, but keep on going throughout the week. Get back to where I'll be. Kind of glad to be back on a proper schedule this week as well. I'm not using it as an excuse, obviously, but. Just uh, being able to say, okay, Monday to Friday, I'm going to work. I'm back on my regular schedule that way. I don't have, you know, extra days off where I don't really have to do anything, stuff like that. So, because um, it does, I do get lazy on those days. So, but do your weigh in and, you know, record everything that way. But today, um, I know we've been sort of getting ready for changes in our exercise program, regime, schedule thing. Um, and right now we're just sort of building back up and we wanted to make you know changes a little quicker than we normally would just to sort of get back to where we were. But I'm not actually going to do a change this week. Um, what I want to do this week is actually sort of go a little further back, something that I probably should have done way back on week 40 um, a couple of weeks ago. But it's it's a little difficult to sort of start from scratch all over again. But these are a few things, the things I want to talk about today actually are just a few things that... Um, like thinking back where I really, really started from, even before I started doing regular walks and, you know, stuff like that, little things that I thought I, I need to start out really, really slowly. And so it's a little different where we stand now because we're starting to do more exercise and you've probably got at least a couple of days a week in there that you're doing it. Um, so these seem to sort of be the little things that are unnecessary now. But what I find is that I still do them because it's... You know, they're like little add-ons that you can do. Um, I don't know if that's a proper term for it. It seems to be. Little things that just throughout the course of your day um, make things a little bit better. Um, or, I don't know if better. See, I can't even talk. <laughs> Let me explain myself first. When I first started doing all this stuff, um, I mean, obviously, I didn't just start out by walking on a treadmill. That's when I started really getting into the exercise and stuff like that. But when I first started out, I wanted to do something and, you know, make a, that first step just to sort of make a small change, something that is insignificant, but I knew that if I did enough of them, they would add up. And what ended up happening is that I started working on the second floor of my building. So I thought, you know what, I've just, I made a decision then, I'm not going to take the elevator, ever. And I took the elevator once during the first tour when the whole group was going in there together. And I've taken it another time since then when we were all going up as a big group for some other stupid thing. I don't know what it was. Um, but since then, every day I had just, I took the stairs every single day. And I'm sort of, I'm on the first floor now, which is not great because it's also right by the front door. So that opportunity is gone. But what I found is that um, by just picking that one small thing, and saying, okay, you know what, I'm just, I'm going to take the stairs every single day. It's a little bit quicker because it's only on the second floor, so I never had to wait for anything. Um, but, I mean, I didn't run up the stairs. I didn't try to take them two at a time or anything like that. I took my time, and now, I mean, I can just walk up at a regular pace. But making a small change like that, I think I just snorted. Making a small change like that, here we go. Um, little things like that do add up. And so that's sort of what I want to talk about today because... Starting out with um, the elevator, that's a prime example because it's usually it's sort of the first thing that people think of is that, well, take the stairs instead of the elevator. If you are working on the seventh or eighth floor, that's probably not going to happen because by the time you get to the top, you're going to be sweaty and gross and you're going to stink all day at work, so I wouldn't really recommend it. Um, but little things like get off one floor earlier. If you work on the seventh or eighth floor, get off on the sixth floor and then walk up the extra flight of stairs. Um, and again, you don't have to speed your way through it. Take your time. If you have to pause part way through, then pause part way through. It won't matter. Um, parking lots are another thing that I was always one of those people that would just circle, circle, circle and search forever and ever. And I would waste five or ten minutes trying to find that parking spot as close to the door as humanly possible. 
And um, it just, it's just sort of second nature, I think, for a lot of us that we just we don't want to walk that far if we don't have to. Um, and when I made that decision to say, you know what, I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm going to grab the first parking spot that I see. And now I find that when I'm parking somewhere, my priority is where can I park that I'm not going to get dinged on both sides from some idiot opening, opening their door too quick, opening, opening their door too quickly. Um, so I find that I almost always find a parking spot right away and zip in there. I'm usually by myself. I don't need to worry about someone scraping my car. And then, you know, I'm usually in the store long before I ever would have been had I just been circling around. I mean, obviously, this is a lot of the stuff is sort of walking based. So if you can't walk and you have your own parking space and everything else, then go with what you're going with. Um, when I started walking the hill, if you remember, there's a huge, huge hill where I work. And I haven't parked up there in a very, very long time. And it's winter time now, so I'm not going to because from what I hear from horror stories from last year, it gets very slick and slippery and there's ice and crashes and everything else so I'll stay down below. And my parking spot is right in front of the front door and I'm there first thing I'm there before anybody else in the morning so I don't really feel guilty. Plus, I'm in theory anyway, doing my treadmill every day so I don't feel as bad. But um, something as simple as that, don't try, like, if you're going into work and if you have the opportunity to do it, if you have a parking spot that you know it's always empty, um, you know, a little area of the parking lot, but it's further away, then just resolve to park there. So I find that once you make that decision, once you decide, okay, I'm going to do this, and whether or not stuff is available, then after a couple of weeks, it just becomes sort of part of your routine once again. And I had parked on the hill for months when I was, you know, during the warmer months. Um, months during, yeah, that's fine. Um, so it's, and it was sort of a, a reward to get to a point wherein I thought, you know what, I don't have to park on the hill anymore. And usually I would just go up on my lunch and get the car and bring it down and park close because at the end of the day, it's a little different than having to go up on your lunch. So little things like that, and I'm sure there are a whole slew of other ones that you can think of, like, because it's going to be different for each person, whatever you have available to you, whether it's at work or at home or something like that. Um, these little things do add up. And... Considering the fact that the majority of us, our activity for the most part has been sort of getting up, going to the bathroom, getting up, going to work, and then we sit all day at work, we come home, we're tired, so we sit all day at home. And especially if you don't have time to really sort of dedicate an hour a day to exercise or anything like that, these are little things that can sort of not necessarily make a huge difference, but mentally will get you into that groove. I can see a hair in the corner of my eye can't be mine now that I think about that. Maybe it's an eyebrow. Anyway, um, by doing these little changes, it's going to get you into that mindset of just looking for something to sort of improve what you're trying to do. And really, that's what it started out for me. It's just not taking the elevator. And the first time, it kicked my ass. It was really tough getting up the stairs. And there aren't even that many stairs. There's probably 14 or 15 stairs to go up to the next floor. Um, but that first time, of course, I'm puffing and out of breath and I can't breathe and I'm sweating and I'm gross and everything else. But by sticking with it and just constantly going up now, then it's, I find I've had people that are in much better shape than I am still wait for the elevator, even when they're going up one level. Um, and the other day I actually had someone wait on the ground floor while I went up to talk to a friend of mine and because I wasn't taking the elevator. So they said, well, I'm just going to wait here <laughs> instead of taking the stairs. And they're in much better shape than I am. Um, so it's it's strange how your mind will change to that. Um, or because of that, I should say, which is probably better. I'm messing all this stuff up. Um, but getting into that mentality of not necessarily, all right, well, I'm going to do this because it burns so many calories. Or I'm going to do this because, you know, this is going to raise my heart rate. It's not really that sort of obsessive fitness thing. As so much as it is just a matter of saying, you know, I need... I don't need to, I don't want to be as lazy as I was before. I can sit here, I can wait for the elevator, or I can just take the stairs, say screw it, and not have to worry about it, not get stuck in there with a bunch of smelly people that are probably going to fart, and then I'll just take the stairs, I'll get up to where I need to be, I don't need to wait for anybody else, and then I can walk back down. And, again, you don't have to, like, leap up the stairs, you don't have to run up them, you don't have to, I mean, take your time. It's going to take time to build up to that. Same thing with the parking lot. Look for a spot, you know, if the first spot you find, just take it. 
And if you see one that's a little bit closer, fine, take that one. But rather than just sort of circling around for five or ten minutes, which we've all done at some point, you know, just zip in there and say, okay, I'm just going to park wherever there's a spot available. If it's further from the door, then fine. If it's closer to the door, then fine. And <clears throat> sorry, once you get into that mentality, it is a little bit easier to sort of make that next step and say, okay, now I need to start doing something specific for exercise, taking those 15 minutes and just going for a walk or lifting weights or swimming or whatever it is that you've decided to do. Um, I find that it, just making that initial step is really the easiest part. Um, well, making the initial step is the hardest part, but by making that step, it makes taking the, ne taking the next step the easiest part. Making? Can't talk at all. I'm sorry. Anyway, I think I've relayed my point. I think it's very clear. <laughs> I don't know if I have or not. But um, so this week, what I want to do is instead of sort of upping you know, the amount of exercise, we're going to look at intensity next week. And we're going to sort of revisit that. We talked about that a long, long time ago. Um, it's been 150 or 175 days, somewhere around there that we talked about it. Um, but next week, we're going to sort of revisit that to take a look at it. So it's not a matter of increasing the intensity or anything else. And when we first started this, it was a matter of, you know, just see, look and see where you can improve things and where you can, you know, do these little things. But we didn't really delve into it. So for this week, um, try taking two or three opportunities, something that you have either at work or when you go grocery shopping or, you know, even something at home. Something that you can look at and say, okay, where can I just be less lazy? Somewhere in here. The elevator is a prime example. If you have, if you work at a building where there's an elevator, getting off one floor early um, is terrific. And then do that for two or three weeks and then get off two floors early. Then do that for two or three weeks and then get off three floors early and gradually build up that way. Um, same thing with parking. If you have a parking spot that's, you know, really close to the door. If you're one of those, like with me, the reason why I parked on the hill was because there was always just the parking lot was always just jam packed. So I would sit and I would wait for 15 or 20 minutes while someone came out and then I would park in there. Now it's a little different because the entire front parking lot, I'm usually like the 10th person there. So I can zip right in there. I don't feel guilty because I've already done the hill. I've done the treadmill and everything else. But if you have that chance as well, if you're looking, if you go in and you find that you end up waiting for 15 or 20 minutes while you're sort of jockeying for position, find a spot that you know, it, and it doesn't have to be up a hill, it can be just further away from the door, and park in there where no one else is parking, and take the extra few steps and walk, and I could probably do that myself as well, um, just that I'm right at the exit. But um, just look for little improvements like that, and it could be, you know, pick two or three different things that you can find either at home or at work or anywhere else that you know, you can say, okay, you know what? I can handle that. I can get away from that. And until we get our exercise up, building it up to where it needs to be, then this is going to help. And what you're going to find is that as you start doing these, you're going to notice more things. And then if you pick one or two things, then, you know, you're going to find, okay, well, here's a third thing. I'm going to add that in there as well. And then a fourth and a fifth. And then eventually it just, it becomes something that you don't really look for. Um, like when I go parking now, I'm, as I say, I'm mainly concerned about you know, the condition of my car so that if I park somewhere, no one's going to hit me. I don't think about the distance I have to walk anymore because it doesn't matter to me anymore. Um, because walking quite literally, I mean, in the majority of parking lots, even in a big parking lot, you're looking at an extra two minutes of walking at most. So when you think of it that way and go, you yeah, know, it's just those two minutes I should do, then it's a, it's a little different again if you're in a wheelchair, which I need to discuss because I had mentioned that before. People that are bedridden or if you're in a wheelchair and I'm just like, I don't know if anyone is watching this, that is. Because if you're stuck in that position, I'm thinking, for me, I don't know how I would deal with it. So I would imagine I'm not going to give a shit about being overweight or if you are, um, you know, it's because it's, there's, I mean, you do a lot of work when you're going through, when you're rolling around and everything, you are still working all the time. So, um, yeah. It's not something I can really talk to, but it's something I wanted to mention because I thought about it afterwards because I had mentioned it a couple of times and I thought, I don't know if anyone would be watching this that is, I mean, confined to a bed is a little bit different because um, we have seen in some of the documentaries, people that are confined to beds um, that, you know, and we can, we can improve on that. But if you're in a wheelchair or if you're completely paralyzed, well, if you're completely paralyzed, I don't know why you're watching this at all. 
Um, you know, because again, it's one of those things I don't know how I would ever handle it or if I could ever handle it. And on the flip side, of course, then you wonder, is this sort of stuff piss people off that are really, that are stuck in a wheelchair that you're thinking, I can't walk. And here you are bitching about having to walk those extra 20 feet to a door. Um, so that always has been one of those things that even when I was, you know, 325 pounds and didn't want to do anything that always felt sort of guilty about. There's that weird, I don't know if it's not survivor's guilt, but it's the same sort of thing where you think, you know, oh, I don't want to walk anywhere. I don't want to do anything. And then you see someone that can't, you go, eh, I'm a shithead. So anyway, a little random thought for you to think on. I was going to delve into that a little bit deeper, but I don't think I'm going to. I'm going to make people angry. But um, anyway, yeah, a topic that I just have no experience with, but it's something that I did think of. Anyway, for this week, what I'm going to get you to do, as I say, just take a look around, see if there are two or three different things that you can find that you'll be able to improve upon. It doesn't need to be anything major. It can be something very ins uh, or unsubstantial, insubstantial, mm, insignificant. There we go. Um, because we are going to build on those, and what you're going to we are going to come back and say, okay, well, this week do find another three. You're going to find these on your own as you're going through. You're going to notice these things as we sort of get into that mindset, and it's just going to sort of become something that you don't really think about. And again, you're going to be able to look like when I look back now and think, how many, how much time did I waste wandering around a parking lot trying to find a good parking spot when I could have just said fuck it and parked in somewhere and gone in and I probably would have been out by the time that I found the actual parking spot. So little stuff like that. Try to find something that you're going to be able to improve upon and you will start seeing them everywhere. And it doesn't have to be something grandiose. It can be something very, very simple. Um, but little things like that as we build on what we're doing, they are going to help. They're going to add up. And overall, it's going to sort of contribute to what we're trying to do. So other than that, there's not going to be any real big changes this week. We are going to address um, sort of a fairly large change next week, though, because at that point, then it's going to be, you know, four weeks, four weeks in. Um, so we're getting out of the wire. So we want to sort of get back to where we were. And then we're going to start delving into a lot more interesting things. Sciencey things, body working things. That's the science of fitness, I guess. Body working things is what we're going to call it. For right now, I'm going to leave this video here. So thank you very much for watching. If you liked it, please poke the like button for me. And in the meantime, keep yourself warm and fuzzy, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.